and it is time to roll out here in Denver, Colorado for day two of the 2011 WFTDA Championships called Continental Divide and Conquer, Minnesota and Texas, meeting for the first time in WFTDA sanctioned play, Dump Truck. How are you, man? I'm fantastic. I'm looking forward to this matchup. I picked it yesterday saying Minnesota would go forward to see Texas today. That's exactly what's happening on the track, and it looks like we're wasting absolutely no time to getting the roller derby action started today, Dwayne. It's going to be Lexi Cuter standing on the line for the first jam for Minnesota, facing off against the legendary veteran Bloody Mary for Texas. Bloody Mary clawing her way through. Defense on both sides and immediately sent to the box. That's a dangerous thing about that chicken brick. Whenever you start with a wall on the jammer line, you make it, your jammer's very susceptible to pick up back box and other various penalties. That's what's happened here within the first seconds of the jam. Now it's gonna be a power jam advantage to Minnesota and they also have lead jammer status. And it is no secret that Texas was favored to win this game, but Minnesota's got some fire. We saw it yesterday as they put down charm after a nail biter of a game. And Lexi Cuter now with the first blood drawn, a five point grand slam against the Tex executioners. And if this sets the tone for the game, we're gonna see one crazy contest. She enters the pack for a second time in scoring position, looking to put more points on the board. Bumped all around by the Texas defense in the front of the pack. The Texas defense is relentless right now. Every time Lexi Cuter hits the pack, she's going to take a hit from every single skater wearing black and red, no exceptions. Second five-point grand slam for Lexi Cuter. Approaches the pack for a third scoring run. Bloody Mary comes out of the box, makes her initial non-scoring pass. Lexi Cuter's going to have a second to put a few more points on the board. It's going to be in the 11 region. It is 11 to zero after the first jam. And what a statement made by Minnesota to start day two. How about that? Amazing way to start the day. Are they going to start it when trying to get into each other's head, trying to frustrate the jammers by giving them that wall to try and break down? Now, you would, you would kind of think that after having an immediate major penalty assessed to your jammer creating a power jam situation because of the strategy, you may not want to use it immediately after. But that's sure. what I get for thinking because Texas is doing it right now. Yeah. Yeah. You. It's tough to second guess the executioners. Uh, Medusa, who scored so many points yesterday for Minnesota against Charm City, just blasts her way through the pack to pick up lead jammer for the second time for Minnesota. Already scoring points. Olivia shooting John, the jammer for the executioners this time, and she is stuck in the back of a three wall of Minnesota. Medusa comes out the front of the pack, but she is bumped out by Barbara Ambush for the executioners. Has to recycle herself, but now she makes her way through the pack again. Another five-point grand slam. Barbara Ambush, one of those skaters that they have acquired during this season that has been a big reason why Texas was so successful at the South Central Region playoff, sending them here as the number one seed from that region. Olivia Shoot and John now out of the pack as well, but no time to do any damage there on the side of Texas. Texas still with a goose egg on the scoreboard. Minnesota now with 16. A grand slam and four more points. After the four points are applied, it's actually 20 nil Minnesota after just two jams. So Minnesota coming out swinging, standing next on the Dr. Hauschka jammer line. It is Vicious Van Gogo and Harmony Killer Brews, who we saw great things out of yesterday, also for Minnesota. Vicious Van Gogo hits the back of the pack right in the middle. It opens up just enough for her to squeeze by. That's what Texas has been wanting to do with that strategy. It's taken them three jams to do it successfully. And right now, they've got the right jammer in the spot because it looks like Van Gogh is on the move, picking up points on this first pass as Harmony Killer Brews is now starting to make quick work of the track and is able to pick up one point before the jam is called. Texas now on the board with four. So a three-point game on the jam by Vicious Van Gogo. And it looks like actually two points. Two points awarded to Harmony Killebrews as she entered the back of the pack as the jam came to an end. Bloody Mary now gets a second chance. She is facing off once again against Lexi Cuter in a repeat of the first jam of the game. Got Lexi a Cuter stuck in the back of the pack trying to get around Diamond Ruff, her own skater. And she is still stuck in the pack right now. It's starting to move pretty good. Lexi Cuter finds an inside line, the inside of turn two. She's able to bust out of the pack, but hot on her heels is number 30. And I think we all know who that is. 
Bloody Mary's going to keep her from scoring too many points as she plunges into the pack. She calls it off just as she enters. And a nice bump by the defender for Minnesota since Bloody Mary pack and neither jammer, however, picks up any points. For those of you out there watching Derby for the first time, you are watching the 2011 WFTDA Championship Tournament, Continental Divide and Conquer. Brought to you by Dr. Hauschka, the WFTDA's official bruise healer. You can lose the bruise with Dr. Hauschka's Ouch Aid. It is amazing stuff. Looks like Minnesota starting to use that immediate rear four wall that Texas has started to use early in this game. I like that strategy being implemented. Not so much as a gameplay necessarily, but when you use it at the right times and you can use it to your advantage, it's a great tool to have in your belt. Agreed. Medusa once again jamming for Minnesota and facing off against Olivia shooting John. OJ once again comes out of the front of the pack first, but on a cut track minor, she is ineligible. So Medusa, if she can come out the front of the pack, can call it off before OJ gets there. However, it's not gonna happen. OJ closes in on the back of the back, sinks her teeth into this turquoise defense. And in the front of the house has a two wall to contend with. She does so. Ooh, cuts the track. Coming out the front, has to recycle herself. And now Medusa picks up the lead jammer, shuts it down. But I think OJ did get some points on that. She got three, in fact. So it's gonna be 27, 20 to seven, that is, Minnesota. 24 minutes left in the first half. Wow, what an opening to this game, huh? Yeah, Minnesota has been wanting to get to this level of gameplay for quite a while. They started off very hot, very early in the WFTDA's uh, life, really. And they had a few years where they were down and out and didn't really make a whole lot of noise. Last season, coming up quick with some upsets there at the North Central Region playoff. This year, making it to the show. Fantastic showing in the last two years for Minnesota. And they're going against one of the toughest competitors in the history of roller derby. Yeah, Minnie is back. That's what we found out in 2010. And it had really been four years that they spent rebuilding. Once again, Vicious Van Gogo, lead jammer for the Texecutioners. Right behind her is Medusa. She rode the back of that pack. You know, they had that rear wall again, and she just pushed, pushed, and pushed. They left an inside line just open enough, long enough for her to take advantage, and she's so quick. She's able to get that quick step under her feet. She gets right by, and right there, it looks like she was able to pick up a few points on that pass before Minnesota was able to answer back. Vicious plunges into the back of the pack, calls the jam as she gets there. Hoping to cut off Medusa, she does do that, but Minnesota wisely put their blockers in the front of the pack, and so she only got one point. We've got tall and long versus short and fit. Looks like it's gonna be Olivia shooting John, number three for Texas on the Dr. Hauschka jammer line, and she's going against Lexi Cuter. Lexi Cuter trying to find the inside lane on her Adam wheels, the official wheel of the WFTDA. She does so, comes out the front of the pack, lead jammer Minnesota, Lexi Cuter. Making it look easy. Lexi Cuter, one of those jammers from Minnesota that really rounds out their core of jamming talent. They haven't used all of their uh, typical jammers yet in this game. I have a feeling they're gonna save some of those weapons for a little bit later on. Lexi Cuter does get through the pack, picks up four points, keeps her head in the game, and calls off the jam to extend Minnesota's lead to now 24 points over Texas's eight. This is a pretty shocking opening to this game, to be honest. Got it some. Got some fresh faces on both teams. Fre yeah, there are definitely are. There's fresh faces on the on the teams. There's fresh faces from Dr. Hauschka, uh -huh. Ouch Aid, who is not only here at the event, she is a, a big part of roller derby. The company is a big part of roller derby, and ever since they've been involved, we have benefited from everything that Dr. Hauschka does. No doubt about that. And standing on the Dr. Hauschka line now, once again, Vicious Van Gogo has done great so far in this game. Vicious spent a season away from the Texecutioners with the mad rolling dolls. Now she's back in their offensive arsenal. Second hand smoke jamming for Minnesota, fights her way all the way to the front and now out of the pack. She will not be lead jammer. So Vicious picks it up and immediately shuts it down as you would expect with second hand smoke, a half a track back to the back of the pack. And play like that is a win for Texas. Whenever you can simply stop your opponent from picking up points, you are doing your job. So kudos there for Texas getting through the pack cleanly and legally and calling off the jam to make sure that the deficit stays exactly where it is. OJ standing on the Dr. Hauschka line this time against Harmony Killerbrews. 
Harmony Killer Bruise trying to pick the lock right there in the middle of the pack, trying to force her way through, trying to find some daylight. Bloody Mary hops, giving it a jumping all over the place. Excuse me, that is Olivia Shoot and John. She does get through the pack. She's going to be your lead jammer. Texas's defense is relentless. Harmony Killebrews still not able to make it through on her initial pass, Dwayne. Yeah, she's having a hard time. That three wall of Texecutioners in the front of the house, keeping her at bay. And OJ takes advantage. Shows up. Blasts her way right through the pack at a five point grand slam by Olivia Shooting John for the Texecutioners in black versus Minnesota in their signature teal. Texas forcing basically a power jam. They've taken the whole element of Minnesota's jammer out of it by holding her back up until this last moment, allowing Olivia Shoot and John to score unanswered points. OJ's gonna try and get through this pack around Jukebox, tries to go to the inside, but Juke stays in her way. Jukebox is one of those skaters that does it all. She'll jam a lot, she'll block a lot, and those skaters are usually the hardest to get around because they understand both, the, both positions to the nth degree. Yeah, you can't overstate the value of a utility player like that. And now OJ picks up three more points, shuts it down. Folks, if you want to talk to Dump Truck and I, you can do so by tweeting with the hashtag talk2, numeral 2, WFTDA. And we'll try to answer you if you got anything to say. Why would they want to talk to us? I don't know. Because <laughs> we're talking to them, I suppose. I, I was talking like, at them. That's like, what I was trying to. That's, that's what I was going for. By them, we mean you. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody Mary jamming for Texas, number 30. Texas in black and red. Bloody Mary having penalty trouble here in the first period. Trying to go to the penalty box, but you got to go all the way around before you can take a seat and serve your one minute. And that one minute in the penalty box brought to you by S uh, CHE Sportswear does not start until your rear hits the chair. And Wexy Cuter loves that because that gives her that much more time to work. However, the Texas defense turning up the afterburners to keep her from catching up. Finally, she does. In scoring position, plunges into the pack. But Texas not letting her through in the front. Finally squeezes through a five-point grand slam for Lexi Cuter. Lexi Cuter has been one of the workhorses with the star helmet cover on this morning. And it's been proving very, very uh, good decision for Minnesota. She's already got 15 points on this game. The other jammer to pick up points close to her is going to be Medusa with nine. On the other side, OJ has been the biggest breadwinner for Texas. But she only has 11 points. So you see the results on the board, a 29 to 17 so far as Lexi Cuter picks up another five-point grand slam. That makes it 34-17, 17-45 left. And now Texas has a full respect in the penalty box. Only two blockers on the track in kill box. And looks like it's going to be Lucille Brawl out there trying to play all the defense that they can. When you're in a power jam, there's only one jammer on the track. And you're in the pack, you only have one job to do, offense or defense. That power jam has now come to a close, Dwayne. But Lexi Cuter certainly capitalized on it. She got two grand slams and Make it three, three grand slams unanswered by Bloody Mary, thanks to the power jam. You cannot control the speed of the pack when you only have two blockers out there and the other side has all four. That is a true power jam. And Lexi Cuter, a jammer of her caliber, will just eat it up. She was able to get those last points whenever she passed Killbox as she picked up a major track cut. Texas has to stop the penalty bleeding if they want to be successful in this game. Minnesota, by most people's minds, not picked to win this game for a few reasons. Texas is extremely veteran heavy. They're always at the top of their game. Minnesota back on the scene as far as the top tier is concerned, and that has been one of the biggest selling points for Texas. But right now, Minnesota's poise and technical skating, keeping them out of the penalty box, has really been what has given them success so far this morning. Now with 39 points with the advantage of Minnesota in turquoise, 17 for Texas in black. 39 points on the board by Minnesota. 30 of them scored by Lexi Cuter. The other nine by Medusa, who we now find standing on the Dr. Hauschka jammer line, facing off against Vicious Van Gogo. A lonely pivot line is Minnesota takes a knee right in front of the jammer line. And it looks like a quick official timeout, possibly. Got something to talk about there. We got something to talk about. Even though talk is cheap and it's better to take it to the track, stop by the talk is cheap website. 
Vicious Van Gogo jamming for Texas, trying to get through that four wall of Minnesota skaters. And she puts that shoulder down and she drives. That's what gave her success last time. But right now, it hasn't worked thus far. And it looks like number 13, Medusa for Minnesota. Now out of the pack, lead jammer position, meaning she owns the jam clock. She can stop this jam at any point just by touching her hips. Medusa out the front of the pack, gets through the pack. Vicious Van Gogo thus far this morning has been very successful against Minnesota, but she is still trying to make her initial pass. Minnesota's defense has just been amazing at containing her, and they've allowed Medusa to get some great work done in the jamming slot. Barbara Ambush and Loose Bandit for Texas, the two wall in the front. Medusa having a hard time getting through temporarily, but then makes her way through. Now on a second scoring run, threatening the front of the house, the last line of defense, Barbara Ambush, she makes it past her and another five point grand slam from Medusa and Minnesota just beating on Texas, 49-17. And it's not over yet in this jam. Vicious Van Gogo starts to approach the back of the pack. Medusa sees her coming, picks up two more points and calls a jam, 12 point jam for Minnesota as they start to stretch this lead as far as they can get it with 15 and a half minutes to go in the first period. Minnesota now with 51 points, Dwayne, over Texas's 17. We are nowhere close to Minnesota and yet we have an amazing cheering section out of the Minnesota state. And uh, they are coming alive as they see what Minnesota is doing to Texas. 51-17, just over 15 minutes left. Olivia shooting John on the jammer line for Texas, and that is going to be Harmony Killer Brews for Minnesota. Back that up a bit. That's going to be number two for Texas. Shortcut, first time jamming thus far in today's game. See if she can turn things around. Slow start, shortcut on the inside, looking for an open lane. At all four members of Minnesota's defense in front of her. Killer Brews does get bumped to the infield, has to be recycled to the back of the pack. You cannot re-enter action, gaining an advantage in position. You must be recycled, and it paid off here. She stayed patient. She stuck with it. She gets through. She's going to be the lead jammer for Minnesota. And she is just cooking en route to the backfield. Shortcut is in scoring position also. But Medusa gets there first. She needs to look over her shoulder. She does not, and Shortcut passes her up. So, One point advantage there for Texas, and you see Harmony Killebrews not happy with herself there, and that's good that she's aware, and, and I guarantee you she is not going to lose her opposing jammer again today. We uh, referred to Minnesota's signature color as teal earlier. Graham Kirker on uh, the Talk 2 WFTDA line reminds us that actually Aqua and Army are the official colors of I did not uh, know Army was a color. I mean, I know that you're a veteran of the Army. <laughs> is there, is there, a, what, is there, when you get a crayon box, you pull out one that says Army? Yeah, see. A, a is it violent? Navy man like you would know that. That's actually one of our old secrets. I can't believe Graham Kirker would just give it away like that. Ah, that's right. Well, you know, he'll be getting a phone call from the Pentagon today. <laughs> They used to wear uh, camouflage in their early days, actually, Minnesota. But now they want to be seen, so here they are on the track <laughs> in front of us. Lexi Cuter jamming for Minnesota in Aqua and Army. A new crayon color coming to you at your local Kmart. Lexi Cuter certainly not camouflage this time as she is getting battered around in the pack. And taking advantage of that is Vicious Van Gogo, lead jammer for the Texecutioners. Lexi Cuter now out of the pack as well. Vicious Van Gogo keeping her eye on her opposing jammer. Vicious looking to pick up some points. Now, whenever she calls off this jam, which she's probably going to do here in a second, she has up to the fourth whistle to score points. So you hear four to kill a jam, but you can score up until that final whistle. So there's a timing effect that goes there. Sure. She knows if she hits the back of the pack, she calls the whistle. She's got about another half a second to get her hips past a couple of more opponents to pick up another few points. And that's going to bring us to 54 Minnesota, 24 Texas, 12 and a half to go in the first period. Specifically, three points is what she got as she entered the back of that pack. Cool thing that Union Vacations is doing, the winner of the WFTDA 2011 tournament. This very tournament that we're at will get a all-expenses-paid trip to Mexico. Aha. The MVP of the tournament, I should say. That's pretty awesome that they do that. And right now, it looks like Medusa's on the track, jamming for Minnesota. 
Bloody Mary still caught in the action there for Texas, looking to get through on her initial pass. These jammers, their first pass, they do not pick up any points. They're trying to get lead jammer status. On their first lap around is when they start picking up points. Right now, Medusa is grabbing the points as she does go through the pack. Smarty Pants tries to push her out of bounds. She does so, but it looks like she's backed up there by number 727, Hertrude Stein. God. And she backs her up with a set and pick and allows her jammer to just jump right back in the action. Hertrude looked like an enforcer out there, punishing Smarty Pants. It's like, I saw that. That's my boo. You can't do that. That. Oh, man. Go to derbyology.com later in the day after these games are over. They're the purveyors of the Derby Unusual. They're not crazy. They just play Derby. Derbyology.com. Don't miss it. I love it when crazy people try to convince you they're not crazy. Yeah, it's not a very convincing argument as a rule. I stopped trying it a long time ago. Nor would I want it to be in this case. <laughs> Olivia shooting John's going to be jamming for Texas in black and red. She's still caught at the back of the pack. Her opponent with the star helmet cover on. Now at the front of the pack is going to be Harmony Killer Bruise. Harmony Killer Bruise with those two monster jams, 20 plus against Charm in the second half yesterday. She's not going to get one this time, however, as Olivia Shooting John comes out the front of the pack, lead jammer to executioners. Polygon showing her ups there. She jumps over a skater there in the middle of the action. And it looks like Loose Bandit and Polygon have been making a very, very great pair at the front of that pack, able to hold back Harmony Killebrews almost solely by themselves for an entire lap. So Texas chipping away at this lead by Minnesota. It's now down to 30 minus two is 28 points. 10-14 left in the first half. A strategy we've seen a lot from Texas over the years is to hit it and quit it. Get in, get out call off the jam. Get in, get out, call off the jam. If you're 60 points behind, it doesn't matter. Just as long as you're the only one scoring on the floor and you control that jam clock, you'll be successful. See Polygon right there with the ups jumping over the Minnesota skater to keep in play, allowing Olivia, Olivia Shoot and John to get by on the outside in that last jam. Rolling out on her right L skates. A proud partner of the WFTDA is Molotov Impale, jamming for the first time for the Tech Executioners in this game, and she picks up lead jammer Tech Executioners. Great time to plug her in. They need a little bit of new life there. They, uh, Texas has got some forward momentum, starting to pick up the pace and close that gap a bit. Now they're gonna throw some young blood in there, jamming for the first time in front of you. Yeah, and when the momentum has stayed this steady on the Minnesota side, there's nothing hurt by trying to change up the formula a little bit and just see what sticks. Molotov and Pell caught the back of the pack. Finally getting out of the pack for Minnesota is going to be Lexi Cuter. Lead jammer status owned by Molotov. She can call this jam off at any time by touching her hips. She's going to get through the pack and do that, and she is going to pick up Five points. That is a grand slam for the Texacutioners. Nice work by Lexi Cuter breaking out of jail and limiting her to one run, but still a great scoring run by Molotov Impale, and this is exactly what Texas needs if they want to take control of this game. Eight and a half minutes left before halftime, and standing on the line this time, the Dr. Hauschka Jammer line is number 13, Medusa, facing off against Olivia Shooting John for the Texacutioners in black. Olivia shooting John with one penalty minute right now, Medusa with zero, so the Jammers have been able to keep it pretty clean for the most part. Penalties have played a very big role in this weekend's tournament, as they always do. Your best teams are gonna be the teams that stay out of the box. The more uh, time you spend on the track with your teammates, the better you can help them. Olivia shooting John out the front of the pack, does get through on the inside of the front stretch. She becomes lead jammer. Medusa still caught in traffic as Smarty Pants is holding her back, but she had to let her go and she uh, made some contact there out of play, which is going to send Smarty Pants to the penalty box, allowing Medusa to break out of the pack. It's like the Tex Fusioner is going to lose a defender now as Barbara Ambush goes for the box. That's her second trip to the penalty box. She'll now have two penalty minutes. Whenever you uh, accrue seven penalty minutes in a game, then you are asked to leave the track as uh, you've been playing a little bit too loose for the WFTDA. That's right. Taking another look at it here, in fact. Jammer on jammer action there. OJ finds the inside line, gets out of the pack. 
That's textbook. Use the jammer as a bump and run. Our friends Derbyology that we were just talking about now point out on the Talk 2 WFTDA line that this is an explosive start today of champs, and I have to agree with them. Derbyville is another great place for all things Derby because that's how they roll. Their shop is here in Denver, but all of you can visit them online. You should certainly do that when you have a chance. Standing on the Dr. Hauschka line when action resumes at the end of this official timeout will be Bloody Mary facing off once again against Psychonovia. And when I say once again, I actually mean for the first time. It's kind of a funny way to put for the first time, isn't it? <laughs> Sin, Sin City Skates, your big five skate techs will fix your gear. They'll chat about new stuff. They're great people at Sin City Skates. We've got just under seven minutes to go in the first period. It is now a 20-point game. Texas being able to shut down Minnesota for the last few jams, uh, not allowing them to pick up any points. Minnesota with 55 in the beginning. Texas now with 35 and lead jammer status and Bloody Mary leading the charge. Bloody Mary en route to the backfield. She is ready to score points, but right behind her is Psychonovia, and that's going to keep Bloody Mary from scoring many points. Minnesota taking their blockers to the front of the pack to prevent Bloody Mary from getting any. Texas in the back. It's going to be close. I think nah, huh? zero points for either side. It yeah. was probably going to be a wash either way. Psychonovia was right behind Killbox, unable to get around her to pick up any points for her team. I tell you, Bloody Mary and the Texecutioners have been doing a great job of hit it and quit it. Get your points, call it off before your opponent can grab it. If you want to love your skates, you should go to bruisedboutique.com. Use the code SEASON15, SEASON15, to take 15% off their merchandise. Again, that's bruisedboutique.com. Right now, we've got both top scoring jammers on the track. Olivia Shooting, John, top scorer for Texas with 18 points. Lexi Cuter, the top scoring jammer for the Minnesota Roller Girls with 30 points so far in this game. We are going to be in the middle of an official timeout. You want to wear your passion, make it happen? Go to flat, uh, flattrackrevolution.com. You should go there weekly, at least. It makes you feel better about life. What a feeling. Makes me feel. <laughs> I do love seeing FTR at these events. They are a ball to hang out with. They've got some amazing. Have you seen their fanny packs? Yeah, I have. I have, and I'm They're jealous. kind of amazing. I will not leave the municipality of Denver without one of them. I, I look forward to seeing you with the fanny pack, because whenever I think denouncer Dwayne, I go, Psh, fanny pack. Yeah, I think it's going to be a new look for me. I think it's going to look good. It, it's important It's important to have a distinct look. And you know this for sure, really? Dunk Truck. You're one of the experts on it. Well, uh, somebody who helped you become one of the experts is Derby Skins, the company who loves making your shiny, hiney, more shiny. It may not be shiny right now, but it is on the inside. Right now we're taking a shot of the Texas fans all the way from Austin. You had Hydra in there, namesake of the trophy that all these ladies are competing for. One of the former WFTDA presidents out there, Cracker Jack as well. Right now we got a replay happening. Showing Lexi Keir calling off that jam as she gets around kill box. Still having a chat out on the field when the action resumes, standing on the Dr. Hauschka line. Once again, we will see Lexi Cuter facing off against OJ. Again, we want to thank Dr. Hauschka celebrating the fresh faces of the WFTDA. Be sure to get your fresh face with Dr. Hauschka. Looks like we had a points clarification there. There was a challenge from Texas saying that they should have had two points and not zero, but the officials say that her hips never pass the opponent, and that's where the money is made. Your jammer picks up points for your team as her hips legally and within bounds pass her opponent's hips. Apparently that did not go on for that last jam, and that would be a zero-zero jam starting off again with 55 to 35, advantage still in Minnesota's corner. The diorama of fandom in this facility is awesome. Texas on one side and Minnesota on the other. It's like the Hatfields and McCoys in here. Only you can make a diorama sound cool. <laughs> well, it is cool. Just look around. Look at this. 
Yeah, it is amazing. It's <laughs> early in the morning. We already have more fans in the stands than we did all day yesterday, showing you that we are right in the thick of things here in Broomfield, Colorado. Wow! So Olivia shooting John threatening the front of the house, but the defender for Minnesota, number 23, Jax Cavass, just took her out center pack, and Lexi Cuter takes advantage. That was actually Medusa, number 13, who did that action normally in the jammer slot so far this morning, and she's putting on the defense. Well, I'll be penalized. It was. <laughs> Go to the box. Lexi Cuter tries to take advantage, but as she approaches the back of the back and calls it off, no points are put on the board. OJ right behind her. And so an exciting jam, but it does result in a wash on points. Iron Doll Clothing has one-of-a-kind uniforms for the modern roller girl and referee. If you're putting your league together and wanting a new look for your team, Iron Doll Clothing has you covered. I can personally say that they're quite comfortable. The lift and separates are not just for women anymore. It's, no, I don't think it ever was. <laughs> See the prosecutor there uh, calling another official timeout. We'll try to investigate that when the action resumes on the Dr. Hauschka line. Here's some interesting numbers looking at here. Uh, thank you. Thanks to Rinkster. You look at Jukebox. She is one of the skaters from Minnesota that is known for her being utility. So far, she has been solely a blocker. She's been in 11 jams, as has Hertrude. They have the most number of jams in play for Minnesota. Both of them have been in the penalty box a little bit, though. Jukebox already with three penalty minutes. Hertrude with two. They need to watch that. It's a little early in the game to be picking up that kind of penalty points or penalty minutes. Uh, but Jukebox not even jamming yet. I'm interested to see how they're going to be using her in the second period as the first period starts to come to a conclusion. And on the jammer line, we're looking at Bloody Mary from Texas going against secondhand smoke from Minnesota. And we haven't seen a lot of her on the jammer line today. She's mostly been blocking, but they have used, utilized her on the Dr. Hauschka line a couple of times, shifting from the right to the left. Bloody Mary just standing ready to go. That time was a points challenge by Minnesota. It's gonna end the same way as the previous jam. 0-0, zero, zero, no jammers hips past their opponent's hips. And with only a 20 point lead by Minnesota with just under five minutes to go in the first half, every point counts, so you can't. Hey, and look at this, a repeat of the initial jam of the game. Bloody Mary immediately sent to the box on a back block and secondhand smoke picks up lead jammer. I tell you, Bloody Mary did the very first jam of the morning. That's exactly what happened to Bloody Mary. She hit the back of the pack too hard, picks up a major back box, sits in the box. Right now, Minnesota's in the driver's seat. They haven't necessarily looked a little flat in the last six or seven jams, but they haven't been picking up any points as of late. Secondhand smoke in the Minnesota Roller Girls looking to change that now in the middle of this power chair. Advantage of Minnesota. You cannot let Minnesota have an advantage like this. Somebody like secondhand smoke and a lot of the jam on Minnesota will just eat you up. And that is what second hand smoke is doing now. A second grand slam and she's going back for more. Bloody Mary serving time in the box. Nice offensive blocking there from Minnesota. They see that their jammer's coming up. Instead of going man on like you see a lot of teams in this scenario, they're really just trying to get Texas out of the way as a team and allow secondhand smoke to do the work that she needs to do. Secondhand smoke taking some hits there from the ferocious polygon who is all over her forces are out and it looks like the advantage there is now going to go to Texas as the power jam pendulum has swung back into the executioner's favor. And Bloody Mary knows a thing or two about capitalizing on power jams. She makes her initial non-scoring pass through the pack now. So she is now in scoring position. Only three defenders on the track for Minnesota. Although the same is true now of the tech executioners as they lose number 22, Polygon. Bloody Mary looking for some love there. She gets out of the pack, picks up five points for Texas, looking to answer back. It is now a 25 point lead for Minnesota. Not big enough to hold it down for an entire game, but it looks like Minnesota has an opportunity to go into the locker room with a little bit of an edge, which is exactly how they did it in the North Central Region playoff against Windy City. Outcome of that game, Windy City show up here as number one, Minnesota number two. That goes to prove we've got a whole nother period of roller derby to come to determine who's going to come out on top and advance in this weekend's tournament. And that's exactly what Texas is going to have to keep in mind going into the half because they 
can make some adjustments and turn this thing around, especially when it's only around, it's been floating around a 15 to 20 point lead by Minnesota most of the first half. However, Minnesota, oh, and don't, even, don't forget about yesterday when Minnesota had such a strong first half and then Charm turned it around. So Minnesota proving themselves this year to be a little bit of a first half team. While they have it, looks like Texas is showing that they simply know how to play the sport and take advantage of an opportunity when it is given to them. Olivia shooting John makes quick work of the pack. She gets in and out, and she's now going to be lead jammer and secondhand smoke back on the track. Power jam is dead. She's looking to get through for Minnesota while Olivia shooting John picks up another five. Secondhand smoke just made it through on her initial pass. This will be her first opportunity to score points. Olivia shooting John going to do a little bit of hit and quit it. She's going to call off the jam before secondhand smoke has an opportunity to pick up any points, as you see there. So Texas strikes back. Three more points on the final scoring run of that jam. 123 left. We're probably going to have about one more jam. The Texas side of the fandom comes alive. Cracker Jack having kittens up in the stands. Olivia shooting John now getting on the line. I like kittens. <laughs> well, we're seeing a lot of them on both sides today, I think. Olivia shooting John facing off against Medusa on the Dr. Hauschka jammer line. We've got blockers in the box on both sides. This could be the final jam of the first period. As we said earlier, Minnesota's in the lead, 67 points over Texas's 52. Both jammers in the mix right now, trying to break their way out of the pack. Front three while there for Minnesota quickly turns into a two. Olivia shooting John looking to get around number 55, Venus Thigh Trap. She finally does and becomes lead jammer, owning the jam clock. Medusa still caught in traffic, trying to get out so she can be a help on the scoreboard to Minnesota. Texas wanting very badly not to be trailing at halftime. Olivia shooting John fighting her way through. Picks up her initial four-point scoring run, calls the jam, and are they going to call a timeout? They I are have a not. They're going to save those timeouts when they need them. It's been a close game the entire time. Texas has been able to not only keep up with the Joneses, but whenever there was a major gap, they closed it right on up. And it's moves like this that you're watching whenever Olivia shooting John gets through the pack, stays on her feet, does a 360, calls off the jam all at the same time. When you have people like that on your side, you never know what the score is going to end up like at the very end, Wayne. Great job by her keeping upright. The Texas fans going absolutely berserk, as are the Minnesota fans. In 2003, the Minnesota Roller Girls traveled to Texas. They were just thinking about creating a league in Minnesota, and they kind of wanted to learn a few things about how Texas, still in their early days, was doing it and they watched some games, got some tips, traveled back to Minnesota, created their league, and yet somehow they never played a WFTDA, which wouldn't even come to be for a couple more years. They never played a WFTDA sanctioned game until now. All this time, what, eight years later. That's and a lot of history. Yeah, and it's a shame because if this is what it's like, then I would like to see more. Look at these stats. The stats are pretty impressive. I mean, you just look at the jammers alone. I know we always talk about jammers. They're the ones that pick up the points. They're the ones with the spotlight on them. But it is kind of key to see how the teams are using their benches in that slot. You got secondhand smoke from Minnesota, been in nine jams, scores 10 points as a jammer, only spends two trips to the penalty box with two minutes in, in that box. Then you got Lexi Cuter and Medusa, 30 points for Lexi, Medusa with 22. They've both been in 14 jams total together. Neither of them go into the penalty box at all for Minnesota. And to me, that's really been one of the big keys there for Minnesota. Minnesota is keeping their jammers on the track where they're supposed to be because when you look over here at Texas's jammer stats you've got shortcut who's picked up seven points uh, four points been in seven jams and she's been in the box three times Olivia shooting John's been once Bloody Mary we've seen her go a couple times from the first jam and then one of the final jams in the at the end of the first period she's been there thrice you really got to watch your jammers going to that penalty box you can't pick up any points if you don't have a star helmet cover on the track no sir 
We are going to start this off, though, at a very, very close game. Uncomfortably close for those who are in Teal and Army. With 67 points and the advantage to Minnesota, 56 for Texas. And all that does is make a Texecutioner hungry. And for the first time on the Dr. Hauschka Jammer Line today, we have Jukebox jamming for Minnesota. And I have waited all day to see this. And she is facing off against Olivia Shooting John. Both of them clawing their way through this pack. Looks Minnesota. like Diamond Ruff is going to be headed to the penalty box for Minnesota. Two wall in the front. They are too far out. Olivia Shooting John blasts right through. Lead jammer to executioners. Olivia Shooting John. And here comes Jukebox, gets out of the pack just behind her. Jukebox skating low. No standing up in the top tier of this sport, that is for sure. Trying to get close to OJ so she can kill the jam and not allow Texas to pick up any points. It looks like Shortcut's going to re-enter the track as she gets out of the penalty box. Three points there for the Texecutioners, one point for Minnesota in the first jam of the second period. Texas striking back a little bit, a net gain of two points. Remember, Minnesota had scored 20 points at the beginning of the game before Texas even got on the board. So Minnesota strong in the first half, but don't forget, they were also strong in the first half yesterday versus Charm, and Charm almost squeaked out a win in the end, and in the final of North Central, they were really strong in the first half against Windy City, and Windy City won in the end. Well, and you gotta, you gotta remember, Texas's uh, performance at the South Central Region Playoff, you know, the final game there, going against Kansas City. It really came down to the last moments, who was on fire the last, and Texas knows how to pull their bootstraps together and get it done. What a three wall in the back by Minnesota, currently holding at bay the jammer for the Texacusioners, Bloody Mary. She finally finagles her way through and finds herself in the front of the house, but there is still one defender for Minnesota keeping her back. Medusa jamming for Minnesota, still trying to get out of the pack. She's at the back, it starts to open up a little bit and she's able to be released on her initial pass and she's gonna try and get in Bloody Mary's back pocket, forcing her to call off the jam so nobody picks up any points. As we say that, Diamond Ruff for Minnesota exits the penalty box and rejoins the action. They now have four blockers versus Texas's three. So Bloody Mary sails out of bounds as she tries to get around Diamond Cutter and picks up a picks up no points on it. So a wash for all that effort uh, by the part of both jammers. Score 68 for Minnesota and Teal and Army. Texas with 59 in black and red. On the jammer line for the Texecutioners is going to be number three, Olivia Shooting John. For Minnesota, number 75, Harmony Killebrews. Harmony Killebrews, really one of the big heroes of yesterday's game against Charm City. She had a number, a couple of monster jams yesterday late in the game. Well, she's been skating very, very well. She's got absolutely no trips to the penalty box thus far. And the second period is when they start using her even more and more in that jammer rotation. Once again, OJ picks up lead jammer for Texas. Olivia shooting John in Texas. Really making things happen in the second half so far. Just three jams in. It is 68-59 Texas, less than 10 points lead by Minnesota to the box. Goes the defender for Texas, Barbara Ambush. So only three defenders on the line, but Olivia Shooting John is not bothered by it. Sails right through, picks up four points, shuts it down. So far, Texas has been the control freaks of the second period, owning the jammer clock every time, getting out of the pack, forcing Minnesota's jammer to hunt them down, to catch up. If you're leading the charge like that and you stay on your toes and you can keep your opponent on their heels, you're going to gain advantage there. You see Olivia Shooting John able to pick up points on that jam. Minnesota unable to catch up in time. To, uh, to kill it. On the jammer line right now, it looks like we're going to have Vicious Van Gogo skated in eight jams thus far. has picked up eight points so far. No trips to the penalty box. Jukebox, 14 jams she skated in. No points and four penalty minutes. And once again, Tex Accusers get lead jammer as Vicious Van Gogo blasts out the front of the pack. These are the kind of adjustments you have to make at halftime if you want to turn something like this around. And Texas is so far doing it. Jukebox has now cleared the front of the pack also, so she is in scoring position also, but Vicious gets there first, plunges into the pack, picks up four points, and shuts it down. Four and out Texas, and it is a one-point game. 68 to 67, <laughs> 25 and a half minutes left in this contest. 
for anyone who has ever watched roller derby for any extended period of time and you've been able to see Texas do it, this is what they do. Every Hit time. It and quit it. They've been behind in points for almost the entire or for the entire game. But they've also been knocking on that door trying to bust it open. Right here you see Lexi Keir gets out of the pack, followed by Bloody Mary. And now we have secondhand smoke. She hasn't jammed a lot today. She's been doing a lot of blocking, but she has been effective when she has. Oh, and she gets bumped out, comes back in. I'm pretty sure there was a there was a cut track. Ma no, there was not. There was no cut track call. She gets lead jammer, secondhand smoke, lead jammer, Minnesota. This is what they need. Minnesota's wanting to get back in that driver's seat. They want to start getting on their toes. They need to get Texas on their heels so they can push back a little bit. A tug of war only works out if both teams are pushing. Bloody Mary a mile away. Well, no, actually, she was close enough to force secondhand smoke to call the jam. One point. But it is a net gain of one. Hey, now it's going to be a two-point game. And it's going to go back and forth like this for a while, folks. I, I, I think it's just going to be that way. Minnesota with 69 points. However, Texas is 67. We've got 24 minutes left in gameplay. The winner of this game, we will go to see the winner of the game following this, which will be either Gotham or Rocky Mountain, one of the epic matchups of roller derby. Either one of those teams... Either one of these teams is going to have their hands full with either one of those teams, but it's going to be a great game that we're going to see right after this. Olivia, Olivia shoot John. John. Jinx, Yomi, Coke. Lead jammer, <laughs> Texas. Comes out the front of the pack. And Psycho Novia getting another shot for Minnesota, but she is hung up in the back of the pack, and Olivia shooting John is going to lap her, possibly pick up a Grand slam rooney but she, Psycho Novia, now clears the front of the pack, and... OJ still hung up. Naughty Kitty up there uh, blocking for Minnesota, number 0, zero a big force of holding back Olivia Shute and John as they have, trying to get through that entire pack. She was unable to do so, but she does pick up four points, and guess what that means? We've got a lead change, ladies and gentlemen. For the Texas now with 71 points, first lead of the game over Minnesota's 69. First time, first time in this game, Texas on top. And... Three times in a row, we have seen Minnesota dominate the first half and then their opponent come back in the second half, at least to some extent. Of course, uh, the result of that has been split. They won regardless against Charm City, but Windy City able to beat them at the end of North Central region playoffs. In my mind, I would say that if they have the same kind of game as they did against Charm City yesterday, where it was those last five or so jams they really had to pull it together, then they will not come out successful in this game. That is not a strategy or, or a, a type of gameplay that works well playing against Texas. Towards the end of Texas' game, they just get tougher and tougher and tougher. So Minnesota is going to have to start doing that momentum swing right now. And the Texas fans looming over the huddle by, <laughs> by the Minnesota uh, team as they take a huddle on their timeout. You take a look at the Minnesota side of the fans and uh, if you dare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you saw them just now, you know what we're talking about, but if you didn't, we can't explain it. The fandom represented here at the First Bank Center in Broomfield, Colorado has been quite spectacular. You got Texas, Texas, kill, kill, kill happening on one side. You got Turquoise and Harvey over there with their shirtless male fans from Minnesota getting their own cheering section going. I'm pretty impressed. They're even willing to do that out on the tundra of their home region. Yeah, I've heard about that, and I'm not known for being the smartest guy on the planet, but even I won't do that. Lexi Cuter now facing off against Vicious Van Gogo. Vicious gets there first. They got various Minnesota players chasing her out of the pack. Diamond Ruff goes to the box, and Vicious Van Gogo going to have a that much easier a path on her hands with only two blockers of Minnesota out on the pack and on the inside finds an open lane slices right through for a grand slam Texas playing some very smart pack play you saw that they were owning the front of the pack keeping the pace as fast or as slow as they wanted leaving Minnesota's blockers at the very back 
Those are points that are easy to grab for a jammer like Vicious Van Gogo. Texas owning the front of the house right now, trying to keep everyone in, in uh, Teal at the very back of the pack. That's going to make it easy for Van Gogh to pick up more points here in the second period. Yeah, a skater like her, half a Minnesota defense is not going to cut it. A third scoring pass now and another five-point grand slam, 15 for Texas. The Empire strikes back, folks. You leave the barn door open long enough, and I tell you, Vicious Van Gogo is going to take advantage of that and just bob a weave on the inside. That last pass was very, very easy for her to do. You give a capable jammer a lot of room to move, they're going to take advantage of it. OJ versus Medusa on the jammer line next time. OJ for the Minnesota, uh, for the Tex Kushners in black, Medusa for Minnesota in uh, Army and Aqua. Aqua. Action underway. Libby shooting John at the front of the pack. Gets bumped to the infield. Looks like that is by secondhand smoke. Gets recycled. Already trying to get up to the front of the action again. Looks like number 22, Polygon's going to be heading to the penalty box for Texas. And it's going to be lead jammer status for Minnesota. As Medusa makes it out of the pack, but she's got Libby shooting John. Coming right up behind her, and OJ is one of the fastest skaters out there on the track. She can make up for lost track very, very, very quickly. Minnesota needs to do a little bit of clock management here, I think, as they are no longer in the lead, and that clock can be your enemy at the final game. Medusa tries to shut it down and then sneak in before the whistle blows. She does so unsuccessfully, zero points for either side. Today's coverage brought to you in part by Fast Girl Skates, the industry pioneer in boot sizing and configuration for women's feet. Visit them online, Fast Girl Skates. Right now the score, Tex Executioners 86 over the Minnesota Roller Girls 69. First period we were talking about earlier, pretty much owned by Minnesota. Texas turning up the heat here in the second period, owning the, the scoreboard. And right now, jamming is going to be Bloody Mary, caught in traffic at the back of the pack. And Harmony Killebrews jamming in Aqua and Army at the front. But Bloody Mary able to find room in the outside of the front stretch. She gets through and becomes your lead jammer, Dwayne. Bloody Mary doing what she has done best for many, many years. Looking at the back of the pack and scoring position, getting ready to plunge into it. Harmony Killebrew still on her initial non-scoring run. So Bloody Mary can pick up the jammer lap point. That's exactly what she does. Grand, grand looks like a grand slam. Bloody Mary, let's wait and see the points. Looking for a signal there. There is not a signal for the points on that one, but We'll see what the result is. Harmony Killebrews has now cleared the front of the pack for her initial run, so she's now in scoring position. Bloody Mary getting a second one. Wow. Big hit there, including a major forearm. Number 22 from Texas, Polygon, new acquisition. Just got out of the penalty box. She's going to have to watch her minutes there. That is her fourth penalty minute that she is serving and she has been an integral part of the pack play of the Tex executioners she lands a major hit there but she ends up paying for it and sitting in the box bloody mary got four points on her second pass and i they're having a quick official timeout i think we all know why but we will get back to you on it for sure derbalife.com will give you a free nutrition profile and they make some very good products, don't they, Durbalife? They do. Uh, I, I you know something about them. I, I know a little bit about it. Uh, about eight weeks ago, uh, myself and others started the Durbalife Challenge, and since then, I'm a much more streamlined and aerodynamic dump truck than I was before. Yeah, I, I notice you seem to be the new economy model these days. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's not hard to do. Uh, the supplements they give you, they taste great. They fill you up. If you need a little bit of a snack, they've got these great little protein bars. You are allowed to eat actual food when you're on the Durbalife program. You just gotta eat smart. They've got some really great products out there. If you wanna get fit and you wanna live healthy, Durbalife is a great way to go. Again, that's Durbalife.com. If you wanna congratulate Dump Truck on his progress with <laughs> Durbalife, you can uh, talk to him and us at talk to WFTDA. Just uh, hashtag that on Twitter and we'll try to get back with you. This is the smallest accumulation of blockers that we've had at the very beginning of a jam so far. Penalty box full. 
at, at least as far as blockers are concerned for both teams. Two and two sitting down. Looks like Vicious Van Gogo able to get out of the pack and pick up lead jammer status. 91-69, Texas over Minnesota after Minnesota dominated the entire first half. Just under 18 minutes left in the roller derby contest. Vicious Van Gogo enters the back of the pack and calls the jam. They are saying that she did not score any points as she plunged into the back of that. If you have the world's most powerful video processing problems, you need the world's most powerful video processing solutions. You can get them from Elemental Technologies. And let's talk about that official timeout that we saw. Looks like Minnesota skaters were recycled into and out of the box. Only one point is going to be assessed by them, not five. That was on the jam before last that we had the official timeout at the end of. That 91-69 score does reflect that score adjustment. Now just under 17 minutes left in the game. Looks like Texas is going to lose a defender right off the bat. Uh, but the lead jammer goes to Olivia shooting John, and Texas has just dominated on lead jammer in this second half. I tell you, they are control freaks here in the second period. They want to own that jammer clock. They know it's amazingly, uh, it's unbelievably important to be able to call off the jam whenever you want. Uh, it gives you an, an advantage in points, so you can call it off and be the only one that picks them up, and you can stop your opponent from picking up any points if you end up lagging. Right now, we do have an instant replay. It looks like Bell. Bell Star going against the jammer for Minnesota, opening up the hole there for OJ. Fantastic teamwork. You can play, you can offensive block and defensive block at the same time if you know what you're doing. Bell Star, I think she's done this once or twice. She's called the jammer killer for a reason, gnashing her teeth and opening up that line. Gnashing her teeth, hopefully, uh, while enjoying the incredible freedom, incredible comfort of the ProTech Dent mouth guard. All you skaters out there need one of your own. Jukebox. Number 18 standing on the line now against Bloody Mary. Jukebox has five penalty box minutes, so she's going to have to watch that. But she certainly feels confident this time as she blasts through the front of the pack, picks up lead jammer for Minnesota. And Bloody Mary still stuck in the back of the pack, and it looks like she's going to go to the box. So a big opportunity for Minnesota. That is a double whammy going to the advantage of the Minnesota Roller Girls. Jukebox jumping the apex, picking up every available point. Looks like she does uh, accidentally cut the track, though, so we are going to have a musical chairs of jammers. You cannot have a jam without jammers on the floor, so once Jukebox hits the penalty box seat, then Ow. she will serve the exact same amount of time in the box as Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary now on her feet, looking to join the action. 91-76, and what a big opportunity that was for Minnesota, but she hit the floor and slid right outside of the foremost blocker on the Texas side. They only had two. You see a lot of the most talented skaters. You, you, you saw it yesterday whenever you have Psycho Babble almost gets bumped out, and they try to ride that line to stay in as much as possible. Now, that can be taboo, as you see there. Jukebox tries to stay right inside in the front stretch there. She ends up just barely touching inbounds, out of bounds, right when she gets past Bell Star, and that causes her to go to the penalty box, giving the advantage now back to Texas. Venus Thigh Trap just bruising Bloody Mary. And Jukebox now back on the track. Bloody Mary just being held at bay by this abbreviated defense of Minnesota. Finally breaks out the front. And on a cut track, Major Bloody Mary goes back to the box. Jukebox now on the track all by herself. Only five seconds left in the jam, but they'll start the next one unopposed. Back, back, fourth and fourth. It's exactly how this jam has gone. Yeah, it's been a, a merry-go-round of jammers in the box, which has not been good for either team. Bloody Mary, one of the hardest working and best jammers that the executioners have, now with five penalty minutes. Jukebox, just six. now starting to jam here in the second period, has six penalty minutes. We're going to have to see some pretty inventive and creative bench managing on behalf of both teams to try and keep their top tier skaters on the track all the way throughout this second period, which still has 13 minutes and 17 seconds to go. Unbelievable. The defense, hyperkinetic, bouncing into each other. Second hand smoke, jamming unopposed. Bloody Mary's penalty had just barely started at the end of the last jam. So she's out for a bit. 
And second in smoke on a power jam. Comes out the front of the pack. Only a 10-point deficit by Minnesota. Two grand slams, and it's a tie game. She sails into the back of the pack, taken down. But back on her feet, out the front. Gets right around Smarty Pants as she exits the pack. You know, big, big ups there to the Minnesota's pack. You saw Texas doing some very smart play earlier, owning the front and keeping it going, making it easy for their jammer to pick up points. Now Minnesota turning on their offensive minds as well. They've got the advantage in numbers on the track as Texas is still in penalty trouble. So they slow it down as much as possible. You turn a pack into molasses, and a jammer's going to sop that up all day long. That's right. And... Secondhand smoke closes in on it. And look, you're right. They effectively did exactly that. They ate up the penalty of Bloody Mary. And Bloody Mary now back on the track. Secondhand smoke being held at bay by Smarty Pants. She enters, picks up three points. That's going to make it a two-point game, I do believe. That's going to bring it up to 91-89. 12 <laughs> minutes left. Can you believe this? Oh, yes, I can. And what I believe is that we are some of the luckiest men in this fantastic community of Flat Track Roller Derby getting to call a game like this set before us. A lot of discussion happening there at the center of the track. It looks like Texas wanted to get one point there at the very end of that jam. It does not look like they're going to be awarded that point. It's going to end as a 3-0 jam. And now we're reset here on the Dr. Hauschka jammer line. Vicious Van Gogh for Texas in black. And Medusa oh. in an aqua and army before she even leaves turn one. Gets through the pack quick and in a hurry. Gets lead jammer status, Dwayne. Straight up the gut. Untouched Medusa. Lead jammer en route to the backfield. Vicious Van and Gogo -Go held at bay, just now comes out of the front. Medusa is going to have the opportunity to put at least a couple points on the board. And may I remind you that a couple of points ties the game. Finds her way to the front of the pack, calls the jam. Let's see how many she got for that. She got three. It is a lead change. Minnesota back in front. If you want to relive this, folks, DVDs, $15 a piece, $150 bucks for the whole tournament. How could you not want to relive this game? Anything could happen at this point. Minnesota back on top, and how close to the blueprint of the Minnesota charm game are we following today? That's exactly what we're seeing. It's momentum swing after momentum swing. We're up, we're down, we're going all around. Texas having some beautiful moments here. Minnesota has a few of their own. The second period has been, you know, as I said earlier, a virtual tug of war. Do you want it for a few jams? You can have it, because we're going to take it back. And right now, Minnesota trying to take it back. No lead jammer status there, but she does get through. Lexi Cuter comes out the front of the pack first, and I'm not positive what happened. No, oh, did OJ pick up lead jammer? OJ, OJ came out the front of the pack, picked up lead jammer, called it off. Well, that was quick. I mean, it was so fast, our eyes didn't even catch it. She squeaks right out, touches her hips immediately. She's all over it. She knows that the clock is not on her side right now. Even though they're only down by one point, that's all it takes to lose a game. Trying to take advantage of every minute out there is exactly what Texas needs to do. And this is why. Single digit seconds on that last jam. Blink and you miss it. This one, OJ on the line again, immediately picks up lead. Jammer, but Minnesota has theirs out in front too as Lexi Cuter. Both jammers just repeating their jam, incidentally, because the last one was so short. Lexi Cuter in scoring position. OJ gets there first. Bumped out by number nine. Second hand smoke blocking this time. We but got another lead change there. Texas picking up three points. It's now 94 Texas, 92 Minnesota. If you need to take your heart medicine, this is a good time to do it because it's going to be a squeaker. It's going to come down to the very last few moments of this game. Man, oh, man, there is going to be some Dr. Hauschka products applied after this bruising game, I'll tell you that. You can always lose the bruise with them, though. Official sponsors of our... Jammer line, on which this time we find Psycho Novia hasn't jammed a lot in this game, but she's been effective when she has. But she's facing off against Vicious Van Gogo, and Vicious picks up lead jammer for the Texecutioners. Vicious now halfway around the track. Psycho Novia still trying to get out of the pack on her initial pass. She's going against a front two wall of Texecutioner famedom. You got Smarty Pants and Curvette. Curvette number 76, the captain of the Texecutioners. She's not going to let you go. Finally getting out of the pack on her initial pass. Psycho Novi from Minnesota. Four points for Texas as Van Gogh gets out of the pack. 
calls it off. Ready to reset. Texas, hit it and quit it. That's what it's going to take. Four and out and two more minutes. Well, minute 30, whatever it was, burned off the clock. It's going to give them a six-point lead, 98 to 92. Rough stuff, man. I tell you what. Be prepared for some timeouts to be called here pretty soon. Both sides of the bench have two timeouts apiece. And there we go. It's almost like I've seen it happen before. Minnesota calls a timeout. We're going to take a quick minute to talk about some of our fantastic partners here at the 2011 Championship Tournament. Well, today's coverage, of course, is brought to you by Five Stride. Of course, we also want to thank Hex Chromosome. Taking another look here at Bloody Mary just getting knocked around by Naughty Kitty. But she maintains her bearing. Another shot of Jukebox jumping the apex on that last jam. That was beautiful. Look at this Minnesota. Look at these crazy, crazy Minnesota fans. I can't even <laughs> read that. That's, Ointment? I, I think that's, I think so. Ointment. I don't know if I want to ask them what that means or not. The, the original language of the Great North is what's uh, being spoken there. And Medusa going to stand on the line once again, the Dr. Hauschka line when the action resumes, facing off against Olivia Shooting John. Of course, once again, we want to thank the Spinlin, the fine folks of Spinlin. They have a new kind of T-shirt outside the lines. You seen that? I have. I don't like the color inside the lines, so I'm a big fan of Spinlin. It's, it's exactly what I was always asking for without even knowing it. <laughs> Olivia shooting John, top scorer for the Texas Cushers with 44 points so far in this game. Jamming, and she is going against for Minnesota. Is that going to be Medusa trying to get through the pack? But not before OJ can do so. Medusa still threatening the front of the wall, uh, the front of the pack, but there's a two wall in her way. Bellstar looking hungry as she comes to rejoin the pack alongside Lucille Brawl and Luce Bandit, her other two Texecutioner partners. Medusa now out of the pack on her initial pass. Livy shooting John picking up points, trying to get around number 00, Naughty Kitty from Minnesota. She's got to let her go. You cannot engage the jammer once you're, when she's 20 feet past the pack. Four points there for the Texecutioners. They continue to pull away here late in the final period. Taking another look here at Medusa trying to get through the front of the pack, only to be passed up by Olivia Shooting John, who makes it a 10-point lead with 640 left in the game. She was actually the opponent blocking Olivia Shooting John there. When she moved out of the way trying to get around Lucille Brawl, she opened up the window herself and allowed OJ to get through. You have to be aware of where your opposing jammer is. Even when you're in the in the pack as a jammer, you are also a blocker until you exit. No doubt about it. Vicious Van Gogo jamming for the Texecutioners. She's going against Jukebox. Jukebox from Minnesota. Again, Jukebox already with six penalty minutes out there. She gets any more, she's done for the game. Yeah, cut track major anything, and she is out of here. They do not want that. Cut track major being awarded to Molotov and Pell as she goes and sits down in the penalty box for Texas. Vicious Van Gogo makes her initial scoring run, and it is a five-point grand slam with Jukebox still hung up in the pack. Jukebox getting bombarded at the front. Bloody Mary now with the pivot helmet on, the ringleader for her pack. She's joined by number 22. has been vicious all day long, Polygon. Holding back Jukebox as long as possible. Jukebox did have her initial pass. Vicious Van Gogo in control, picking up two points to the Texecutioners. And it looks like we are going to have a timeout, Texas. Taking another look at Vicious, fighting her way through this pack. You got to give her a lot of credit because there were four defenders from Minnesota in that pack and only two from Texas still managed to put seven unanswered points on the board, making it 109 to 92, a 17 point lead with just over five minutes left in the game. That's an example of some of that creative bench coaching that we're talking about at the beginning of this period. You have to be able to throw skaters in different spots whenever you need them most. If you only have two blockers on the track for your squad, going against four, then you need to get that relationship that you build and practice every single week and all season long with two ladies that know how to skate together very, very well. They don't have to verbally communicate and they won't uh, pick up any penalty minutes and they can contain the jammer all at the same time. Great job there by Texas's bench. See a huddle of officials in the middle joined by Texas coach Johnny Roastbeef concerned about something. We have a Texas timeout during this time anyway. 
And it looks like it is going to be coming to an end now. Harmony Killer Brews with three minors going to take her intentional fourth. That usually sets up someone to jam in the next jam following, so you'll probably see Harmony Killer Brews with the star helmet cover on herself here pretty soon. Secondhand Smoke jamming for Minnesota. She's got four penalty minutes, been able to pick up 21 points, and she skated in 21 jams thus far out of 42. She does get through the pack, but she picks up a major back block, and that's going to be a power jam advantage to Executioners. And you cannot afford to have this this late in the game. Secondhand Smoke, that's going to be her sixth box minute. And she's going to be dangerously close to losing Minnesota a jammer late in the game. Texas ineligible for lead jammer. Olivia Shooting John comes out the front. Oh, no correction. They, they changed their mind. She is lead jammer, Olivia Shooting John. And excuse me, excuse me, I say Olivia Shooting John. It's actually shortcut. Lead jammer for the Tech Executioners. Shortcut hasn't been wearing that helmet cover very often in this game. When she has, she's made it count. Right now, she's trying to get by the Minnesota defenders. Finally able to do so, picking up five points for Texas. That's a grand slam, Tech Executioners. It's going to make a 114 to 92, and Shortcut is not done. She's going back for more. Enters the back of the pack right now. A couple of defenders on the Minnesota side in the front of the house. Make it a four wall now as they congeal in front of her. Texas looking to take this thing back and put the final stake. Second, Just under four minutes left. Second hand smoke re-enters the action. She's now through the pack on her initial pass. So she's now in scoring position, but shortcut looking for another scoring run, looking over her shoulder to see the approach of second hand smoke, shuts it down. She did get all four points on that last run though, and that is gonna make a 118 to 92, and things are looking kinda hairy for Minnesota now, who came so close. But we still have three and a half minutes left, couple of jams, a monster jam turns this around. Looks like Minnesota's gonna put Medusa in there with 27 points total thus far in the game on the Dr. Hauschka jammer line. And for Texas, they're gonna throw Vicious Van Gogo, able to pick up 38 points, and she skated in almost half of the jams available. Now we're late in the second period. Penalties are gonna weigh really heavy. Just going down the entire roster, Texas's trips to the penalty box have accumulated to five, one, six, two, three, three, one, two, one, four, three, three, zero. You look at Minnesota, they've got a lot higher numbers over on their side. They've got a lot of danger as far as penalties are concerned. Bell Star doing a little uh, dance on the pivot line by herself before the jam begins. It is now done, so Vicious Van Gogh on the outside looking for an open lane gets battered by Jukebox, now blocking for Minnesota. Yeah, she made, uh, made sure that she recycled Vicious Van Gogh to the back, knocking her out of bounds and then stopping him and retreating giving Medusa plenty of time to get out of the pack, pick up lead jammer status. Now Minnesota needs to be in control. They need to own that jam clock, and they need to keep their jammers on the track. Remember, we saw two 20-plus point monster jams by Minnesota late in the game yesterday. Anything can happen when we're talking about Army and Aqua. But Vicious Van Gogo comes out the front of the pack, forcing Medusa to call it off after a quick four points. That's going to make it 118.96, just under two minutes left. Probably only a couple of jams remaining. Taking another look at Medusa as she, man, just zigzags through that pack. She skates better than I walk. She gets tripped up. She's on one skate. She gets hit by two more executioners and is still staying on her feet. After skating as much as she has in this game, 13 jams, it's pretty impressive to see that her legs still have that much strength, especially when she's been competing against the executioners for almost two full periods. Good grief. It's like roller derby parkour out there when she's on the track. <laughs> Shortcut jamming for the Tech Executioners. Caught in the back of the pack, trying to find her way on the inside line. She does find the front two wall of Minnesota Roller Girls. Trying to find her way out as is Harmony Killer Bruce who gets bumped to the infield by Olivia Shoot and John and must be recycled to the back of the pack. Looks like Lee Jammer is not going to be shortcut. She is the first one to exit the pack and put herself in scoring position though, Dwayne. 
Yeah, and if she plunges into the back of the pack and puts some points on the board, which is what she is doing right now, and on the inside, untouched, a five-point grand slam for the non-lead jammer. Shortcut, took a shortcut through the inside of the pack. Now, as we look at the clock, you have the period clock with about 35 seconds to go. As that expires, please refer to the jam clock as this game will come to a conclusion at the end of the jam, assuming that the period clock runs out. 23.96, if this can come to an end, you can bet Minnesota will call a timeout, but 20 more seconds go by and they won't get the chance. Venus thigh trap, trying to hold back shortcut. She is one of those precision blockers. She can oh. plant her hips where she needs it when she needs it. They do get the chance. Harmony Killer Bruce comes out the front of the pack with five seconds on the clock, calls the jam immediately, and Minnesota calls a timeout. They are going to get one more chance. And it is a take another look there. Man, what a hit on shortcut by Venus Thigh Trap. Just sends her packing. She's going to need some ouch aid. 123 to 96. Texas trying to drop the hammer, but Minnesota with one last shot at it. Thanks to the following event partners for making the 2011 WFTDA Championship Tournament possible. Jules Doyle Photography, Roller Girl Skates, Green Monster Roller Sports, Derby for All, Derby Supply, Vanilla Skates, 5 on 5 Magazine, Skate Court, Wicked Skatewear, Blood and Thunder Magazine, CHE Sportswear, Hex Chromosome, and Five Stride Skate Shop. Vicious Van Gogo, Medusa, each standing on the Dr. Houchka line for what is certainly, without a doubt, the final jam of this game between Minnesota, the first ever Wolf to Sanction game between Minnesota and Texas. A micro pack, box full of blockers. Only two on either side. Medusa trying to squeeze through. Vicious is gonna get there. She, she, she might not. She gets status. She's gonna look right up at that clock, she but does she does not. it. Medusa, lead jammer for Minnesota. Vicious Van Gogo right behind her, but with Vicious scoring points also, it's gonna be awfully tough. Medusa en route to the back. This is the last chance in the 2011 WFTDA season for Minnesota. Medusa plunges into the pack, picks up a four point pass, but Vicious She's gonna Probably answer gonna back with her. four of her own, it looks like. She was ushered into that pack by the Bell Star who then had to almost immediately go right back to the penalty box. Now it's Loose Bandit, Olivia Shoot and John, and Curvette on the track as Vicious Van Gogo's support staff. Medusa does get through, picks up four more. Vicious Van Gogo in her back pocket, picks up three of her own. A net gain of one on that one, but man, it's gonna be too tough for Minnesota to do this. Just 52 seconds left on the jam clock. Psycho Novia heading to the penalty box for Minnesota. Vicious going to the box is going to be the only way at this point because she's going to match Medusa for every trip to the box. 40 seconds max remain in the game. I think it's pretty safe to say that the Texas Roller Girls are going to be moving on to battle against the winner of the next game, which will be the Rocky Mountain Roller Girls reigning WFTDA championship, championships versus Gotham Girls Roller Derby, former champions of the Women's Flat Track Derby Association. 20 seconds left on the jam clock. A two wall in the front trying to desperately force a back block on Vicious or a cut track major. And hey, they do not get it. Second hand smoke going to be going to the penalty box, picking up a major penalty of her own. Vicious Van Gogo with another five point grand slam. Medusa lapped on that one. Medusa put on the ground by the team captain Curvet to end this contest. And Texas pulls off the victory. They will go on tomorrow to continue in the tournament 141 to 104. The final score between Texas and Minnesota, charter members of the WFTEA meeting for the first time, and look how close it was. Secondhand Smoke actually did pick up her seventh box minute at the end, so presumably got ejected in the final 
minutes of the game. Bloody Mary so close. She had six of her own. Texas taking their victory lap. Man, oh man. Boy, I mean, top to bottom is a fantastic game. Minnesota showing that the North Central region is on the map. When you play a, tech, a team like Texas, the way that they did with their fantastic pack play, very, very smart. Their great jammer rotation. They held a lot of weapons till the second period when they knew that they would need them. Their smart bench managing going against Texas's ferocity, veteran experience, fantastic jammer rotation, which is primarily a three, but they made it work for them. Pack play, all these things came into play. Texas walking away with the win. Welcome back, I'm Desi Creation, and I'm joined here with Vicious Van Gogo of the Texas Roller Girls Texacutioners. Excuse me if my heart is just racing so much. That was an amazing bout. Yes, yes it was. <laughs> to begin, these two teams have never faced each other in the entire time. Both Texas and Minnesota are original founding members of the WUFTA, and ne neither have ever faced each other. Was this game anything like you expected it to be? Uh, I don't think it was. I think we kind of, we definitely knew never to underestimate our opponent, um, and I think we thought we were a little more prepared for their back wall than we were, so we had to kind of work out some kinks, but I think that we did it. We knew they'd be a strong team, obviously, always a hard-hitting team, always very smart. They've got a lot of really uh, fancy footwork going for them, so we knew we were solid and they were the fancy feet, so we kind of had to prepare for that. <laughs> they do say that they have the Great Wall of St. Paul there in Minnesota. <laughs> Now, in the first half, it was all Minnesota, and in the second half, Texas came out and just put the points on the on the scoreboard. What was the uh, what what happened at halftime that made that point change? I felt like uh, we were getting our feet under us a little bit more uh, towards the end of the first half, and uh, so in the second half, we decided uh, one we needed to get that back wall a little bit more often, <laughs> and um, two just stay together as much as possible. We thought we were stringing a little, so. Um, Staying together, communicate, and get that back wall. <laughs> it is a rough one. Now you'll face the winner of Rocky Mountain, who is the defending 2010 champions, yes. versus um, oh, uh, Gotham, yes. who is the 2008 champion. Yes. How have you prepared for this game coming up next? Um, a lot of footage, a lot of push-ups, a lot of sit-ups. No, I'm just kidding. Um, a lot of footage, a lot of uh, just talking about their particular strategy, watching, um, and just practicing our game. So we know what we can do well, and we're going to go in with that. So There you have it. Texas is ready to go, and Minnesota was a fantastic opponent. Wonderful bout. Thank you so much, Vicious. Thank you.